Good morning, everybody. How are we doing today? We're so glad that you guys are here with us. <clears throat> Excuse my throat. I have been sick all week. I've had this awful, awful head cold that uh, has got all through my sinuses and somewhat down into my chest and my throat. And you probably can hear that in my voice today. But we still want to be here with y'all sharing the good word of God with y'all and just having a great time of fellowship this morning. So glad so many folks, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll have to put up with me clearing my throat a little bit. So many folks in here today, we're so thankful for that. And uh, Scott and we see Mike Pierce. Um, let me see who else we get in here. Uh, Dave and Sandy, always good to have you guys here as well. Jesse and Lisa. Um, and then we've got let me see here. Mike Mart. How you doing, Mike? Glad to have you here. Rebecca from Indiana. So glad Rebecca is here. Dear lady, dear friend of ours. Rebecca Touched by Yarn. God bless you this morning. <coughs> glad you enjoyed your, your cutting board. And uh, Sandy, she truly was blessed by that cutting board. So um, thank you for all of those things. Lynette from Coffee Angels. So glad you're here. And Christy Betts, good morning to you. Paul, our friend, the bearded carpenter. So glad uh, you're here, Paul. Got to give you a call here, Paul, right away. Run some things past you through your expertise, expert minds on uh, building stuff. So, <clears throat> Kareen, how are you? Hope you can all hear me. I don't have a lot of um, volume in my voice today, but that's okay. And uh, Roberta Driver, how are you doing today? So glad you're in here. Mr. Willie, good to see you. And uh, everybody that's in here, please do me a favor. Um, hit that thumbs up so that um, the old algorithm knows that you're here and that it helps our channel as well. But um, I see some very serious prayer requests that are in the uh, feed already. And we want to be praying over those things. Mike, so... Uh, Mike Pierce, so sad to hear the passing of your friend. We'll be praying for you and for that family, for those people. Uh, Sandy, um, your sister as well. <clears throat> we will definitely be praying for that situation and for your travels, safe travels as well. And Lainey, um, she is still battling with, with cancer and those things. So definitely um, keep her in your prayers as well. Uh, but we just want God to minister to all of these needs. And he is a prayer answering God. He really, truly is. We see that every single day. We know that here at Creekside Chronicles. And, and, and I was thinking this morning, I really hope that this, um, this Sunday morning <laughs> church <laughs> sermon, whatever, I hope that it blesses you. Um, I don't want Creekside Chronicles to be just another place that people can go and and just hear something. I want you to feel something as well. I want you to be ministered to. I want you to feel like these Sunday morning um, times together are uplifting you, are helping you through your week, some pains and hurts, um, and encouraging you. So we hope that that is the effect that it is having. Excited today to talk about some stuff here. God's got you covered, and uh, so don't worry. Um, he does. We're going to be talking about that here. Um, also, if you don't mind, if you like what we're talking about and you agree or you're, you're here or even if you disagree, um, throw a comment in there. We um, we love to see comments coming through the feed. So that uh, lets me know. It's like sitting in, it's like being in church and I'm preaching and someone says, amen. Um, that's what the effect that it has. So we appreciate that so much. We really, really do. Um, and we'll get going. We're going to be reading. <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to be reading from Psalms 91 this morning. It has been so hot here. Um, it was like 40, which is 104 Fahrenheit here yesterday. Um, we have been in a just, you know, in a heat wave locked under this blanket of heat and humidity all week long where it's been, you know, 90, 95, 100 for day after day after day. And many of you understand that you live in the South, but that's unheard of really for we where we live here. It really doesn't 
get that hot, but it is, it's definitely been hot. Makes it very tough to keep working, uh, but we push through it. If you have a scripture or a Bible in front of you and, and um, yeah, it's hot and you don't mind turning in your Bibles, we're going to read some um, stuff here. Some scripture. Let me get some things open here on my iPad. And Psalms 91 is one of my favorite um, scriptures for sure. Um, it's just so powerful. And so I want to read some of this to you today. And we're glad again that everybody is here. I uh, appreciate everyone that supports Creekside Chronicles with your uh, being here. And um, how hot is it today? Um, we're supposed to be right at 39 today. Um, which is hovering right around 98. So it's it's supposed to be pretty warm. But the next um, week from tonight all the way over into next Saturday is rain every single day. So that's going to complicate the move because we have an open pickup and an open trailer. And so that's going to limit what we can put on it. Um, so anyhow... We'll be talking about that a little bit here in just a bit. But uh, good morning, Casey. How are you? <coughs> Excuse me. Forgive me. I know that sounds horrible on the video, but there's nothing I can do about it today. Psalms 91. Tarps. That's right, Christy. Lots of tarps and lots of uh, tie-down straps. Uh, yeah. It says this. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge. He is my fortress. He is my God. In Him will I trust. I want you to listen to that again. He is my refuge. The psalmist is writing, he says, this is what I'm going to say about the Lord my Lord. He said, I am going to say without a doubt, he is my refuge. If you're sitting beside somebody, look at them and say, he is our refuge. He is our fortress. He is my God. And because he's my refuge, he's my fortress, he's my God, in him I will trust. And because I will trust him, because he's my refuge, my fortress, my God, he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. If you understand the um, literary um, freedom that the writer takes there, he's describing what a eagle or what a chicken or whatever an animal feathers does, they spread their wings out and protect their, 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 their babies. So he shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be, not maybe, not hopefully, but shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Don't be afraid for the arrow that flieth by day or those attacks that come by day. Don't be afraid for the pestilence that walks in the darkness. Don't be afraid of the destruction that wasteth at noonday. This is good scripture. A thousand shall fall at your way, at thy side. They, they're just going to fall. And 10,000 at thy right hand but it shall not come nigh thee. That's a lot of stuff going on around you. Hey, Sam, I am so glad you made it. That's a lot of stuff going on around you. I, I want to back up for a minute. Look at what's going on. Don't be afraid of the terrors at night, the nightmares, or the arrows that flyeth by day. Those are attacks. Don't worry about the pestilence in the dark. Don't worry about the destruction that wasteth things away at noonday. Don't worry about a thousand, they're going to fall. Don't worry about the 10,000, they're going to fall. 
that's a lot of stuff going on around you. That's a lot of busy. Morning, Marshall. How are you, buddy? That's a lot of stuff going on around us. But even though it's going on around us, watch this. It shall not get close to you. Though all of that turmoil is going on around you, it shall not come nigh to thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Watch and see what happens to the wicked. <clears throat> because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. And the reason that this is going to happen is because you've made him your Lord, your refuge. You know he's your habitation. And because of that, there shall no evil befall thee. None. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy home or thy dwelling. It is, Paul, powerful scripture. Watch this. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. In all thy ways. So he's going to discharge angels. From glory. From heaven. He is going to. Discharge them to come and keep you. So you may not see angels. But the Bible says we entertain angels unawares. It says we don't even know. That we're entertaining angels sometimes. <clears throat> and they shall bear thee up. In their hands lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So the things that could make you stumble, that would result in agony and pain, they're going to pick you up from that. You're going to be able to tread upon the lion and the adder or the snake. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under your feet. Because he, God, hath set his love on you. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because you've known his name. If I say nothing else, just reading these scriptures is so good today. He shall call upon me. And when he calls upon me, watch this. This is one of the keys here. I will answer. How many have ever called you your kids and they ignore you? Isn't that frustrating? <clears throat> How many times has God called us and we don't answer him? But he said, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Isn't that amazing? Those are some powerful, powerful scriptures. That's right. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I'll strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous, uh, righteous right hand. Good scripture. Isaiah 41. Now, I want to start by saying this. No matter, <clears throat> excuse me, the sign over the church door, there's one thing that we can all agree upon, I think, here today. And that is we can agree upon the blood of Jesus was shed for our redemption. If you agree with that, Throw an amen in your comments so we're on the same page. The thing that we can agree upon is that we need the blood of Christ applied to our lives through baptism. That Christ alone and him only purchased us from hellfire and damnation and in eternity in hell, through his blood. His crucified body that, that was shed. It says the scripture, the scripture tells us that by his stripes, in other words, at the whipping post, when the Roman centurion whipped him, by his stripes, we are healed. That the blood of Christ has to be applied to all of us. Now, I'm not on here as, as trying to um, correct anybody's theology or challenge anybody's. I am simply saying we all can agree <clears throat> for God so loved the world that he gave him to be crucified. A lamb, it says, led to the slaughter. 
<clears throat> so we must agree that we need the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, if you look, and I'm, I'm going to get into this a little bit. The blood is the only element in the body that reaches, affects, and fuels all other parts of the body. That red, uh, rich, reddish, purple elixir, it flows silently through our cardiovascular system, all through our body and veins and blood vessels. And that blood, it carries the cargo of much needed oxygen, molecules, nutrients that are necessary to sustain life in every cell of our body. You take the blood or the circulation of that blood out of our body, we, we're dead. You see, if the blood is restricted long enough from any member of the body, any member, that member will um, eventually internally asphyxiate and begin to change color and die from the lack of blood. If you put a string around your finger or an elastic band around your finger really, really, really tight to stop the blood flow, eventually... It'll turn blue, blood will be gone, and eventually your finger will literally die. That's right, Kareem. When you're trying to help somebody that has a severe bleeding wound, you put a tourniquet on and tighten it to staunch the blo blood loss, the flow of that blood through that wound. We all know those things. These cells will quickly begin to die even without an external assailant if the blood ceases to flow. Their death is not the result of an external attack, but an internal deprivation. If your blood stops flowing, it doesn't take anything else outside of your body to, to, to bring about effect about your death. You'll just die because the blood stops flowing. See, every member, every limb and organ in your body needs that blood flow. Not one of the members of this body can live without the blood. See, your blood has a culinary duty of delivering the soluble dietary contents throughout your body. It's sustenance. It is. See, the blood functions as a paramedic. Your blood functions as a healer. White blood cells stand on guard, on duty, ready to attack any intruders in the form of bacteria or foreign cells or anything like that. Foreign substances that try to trespass and disrupt the vitality of your body. That's when your white blood cells, if, if you have a puncture wound, um, your white blood cells, uh, you know, your red blood corpuscles and cells, they travel constantly, but the white blood cells don't. They'll stay in place and move very slowly. And, and they're the ones, they're on guard duty. So when there is a wound, those white blood cells will rush to that place of injury and begin to heal it. And what happens, this is so amazing to me, if you understand biology and the human body, that white blood cell will surround that trespassing organism or bacteria and it takes it into its own uh, cell structure. That's what the white blood cells will do. And in taking it into its own body or cell structure, it will destroy that in invasion, that invasive um, parasite that comes into the body. That's why it's so important that your white blood cell count is, is right. But that's so amazing to me because that's exactly what the blood of Jesus Christ does. It took an invasive thing called sin and he took it upon himself to shed his blood. And in so doing, he covers us in his blood through baptism and in taking us into him in through that baptism and blood, he destroys um, what sin has put in our life. So the blood is a defender. The white blood cells, they're a military. It's our defense. And these cells are unique, uniquely e equipped to 
off the attackers and expel it from her body. It strips the attackers of its spoil and its power, renders it useless, powerless, with no lasting effect on the body. The body has such power to heal itself. Stay with me. Uh, just a little bit of a biological lesson here first. See, the physical body echoes and illustrates the power of the blood of Christ in us and, and in the church. Every member of the body of Christ, regardless of morality, maturity, position, it don't matter, young, old, middle-aged, we all need the same thing. We need the life-giving blood of Jesus Christ. See, without the blood, we have no proof of sonship. You see, physicians test the blood to determine who your parents are, who your father is. We can't lay claim to our father's inheritance if we don't have the DNA to match it. That's the truth. So if you want to lay claim to your inheritance in Christ, he's going to be your daddy. <laughs> and the only way he can be your father is you've got to share the same blood. And the only way you can share his blood is to be baptized in it and have it wash away your sins. There's no remission without it. It's the blood that guarantees our blessing. It's the blood that guarantees our miracles. It's his blood that guarantees our, in, our inheritance and our heritage. We have to be a legitimate child of God to receive the heavenly promise. And we have to be born through him, through his blood. You know, you have to know his name. That's what the scripture said that I read. We did not um, need the blood only for when we cried out to the Lord for salvation. No, it's to rescue us from hellfire. We still need the same thing today. You see, the blood has to continually flow through the body. It has to. The blood stops flowing, you'll die. See, all of our daily strength and nourishment, every promise and miracle must flow to us through the blood. You see, when we eat, the food is digested and nourishment goes into our blood and it flows to all the members of our body. It does. And the same thing with the blood of Christ. It's a daily power. It cleanses us. It empowers us. It keeps us 24-7. It helps and strengthens us. You know, and I say this carefully, but we've almost lost uh, our, our teaching of the blood in this age and generation. You never hear about it anymore. It's, people say it's too gruesome to talk about the crucifixion. I'll tell you what, if you remove the crucifixion out of a uh, uh, relationship with God, you have no relationship. Oh, we've learned about the spirit of God and we need the spirit of God. But we put so much emphasis on um, organized religion and organized worship and, 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 and all of those good things that we're failing to take people back to the very beginning. And that's the continually, uh, continuing powerful daily flow of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for you and I. See, the blood in our natural body doesn't flow one time and then quit. You know, you just don't have a sudden burst of blood throat flow through your system when you're born and then that's it. It just quits. No. And neither was the blood of Calvary just for the application at your time of salvation. It keeps working for the things that we do. It keeps working to protect us from our very own destructive tendencies. But religion produces a generation of believers who are seeking to be empowered but all the while, don't feel forgiven. Empowered, but insecure. Trying to operate in gifts while fighting daily guilts. You see, God's spirit does not free you from sin. And don't, don't critique me here yet. Hear me out. But, but God's spirit, just, ha just saying I got God's spirit, that doesn't, that doesn't free you from sin no more than saying you have uh, 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 um, a wash machine makes your clothes clean. There's got to be some interaction. If you want your clothes clean, you can't just lay them beside the, the wash machine and hope they climb their way in there. 
clean just because they associate with the washing machine. They're not going to get clean because you put your dirty clothes beside a, a, a box of Tide. They're not going to get, you know, you have to take those clothes. You've got to put them in the water. You've got to apply a cleansing agent called the soap and then let them go through the cycle and then take them out. Now they're clean. And so we can't no more have clean laundry that way. And no, we can't say that we're cleansed by the blood if we just say we believe in the spirit. You have to apply it to yourself. How? That's why we baptize people, because that puts you and buries you. The old has passed away. All things have become new. And now that blood of Christ washes. It don't matter what you were before. Hear me, folks. It doesn't matter. You could have been a bank robber, uh, a murderer. You could have been a, uh, whatever. I got to be careful with some of the words they use on here because they'll pick it up and, and crucify me for it. But, but no matter what you did in your past, I'm telling you right now, it does not matter what you've done, how many relationships have failed, no matter how many times you faltered, how many drugs you smoked or inhaled or drinks you put in your system, relationships you've gone through, man or woman, it does not matter. The blood will wash you clean. It'll take all of that stuff out of your life and free you from it. It will. It's the blood that cleanses us. Now, we do need his spirit, but it's the blood that cleanses us. There's far too many people that are just relishing in the fact, oh, spirit, spirit, spirit. And that's wonderful. And I'm not belittling that. I believe in God's spirit and having it. But there's so many people that, that say they have it, but are feeling condemned by their past and by their mistakes. They can't figure out how it is possible to say, well, I have the spirit of God. Yet feel so weighted down with guilt and condemnation. That's not the will of God for you, friend. If every time you start singing a worship song, the, the devil starts whispering in your ear about your failures. That's not the will of God for your life. There is therefore now no condemnation, it says. But you have to know it's the blood that washes you clean. And without the blood, we have no life. How many have ever heard someone say in church or whatever, I just don't feel like I have any life left in me. They look at you, you know, they're spirit filled people. They go to church, they pay their tithe, they do it all right. But they look at you and say, I have no life in me. But the preaching of the blood is not too gruesome. It doesn't weaken us or offend us or it shouldn't. It relieves us of a pre-paid uh, uh, debt that we or a debt that we needed to pay. Why waste the power of God in you on the problems of the past if you don't think it's going to work? The blood already totally destroyed the bondage of your past, my friend. Those chains that held you captive are no more. If you've been if you've been buried in the blood of Jesus, and if you don't know what that means please email me and I will gladly uh, talk to you about what it means to get baptized. But the spirit refers us always to the blood. You see, in the, in the testaments of the scriptures, the New Testament, it says there's no Pentecost where there's no Passover. See, 50 days after Passover came Pentecost. But Passover was when the blood was applied um, in the, on the doorposts and the lintels of the home's uh, in, in Egypt for the Israelites when God delivered them. So the blood came first before the spirit. You can't have one without the other. There is a devilish prejudice, a demonic judgment that wants to selectively deny the blood to some or certain uncomely members. We think that, you know, you know it's just for the select few or this or that. The person fails in an area that most are acquainted with, that we all struggle with in a similar area of life, we immediately praise God for the blood and we'll say, oh, yeah, we struggle with that. We all struggle with that. But let some unfortunate soul fail where most everyone else never has and we'll judge and condemn them. As if the blood works for common failures, but not for the most severe. 
respecter of person, my friend. He's always here with us, always. It doesn't matter how gruesome your life has been, how painful your past may be. We, look, don't label people. We mark them off and then we condemn them. We deny the power of the blood in their lives because they may not look like us or sound like us or whatever. We've been like Cain, spilled our brother's blood at the altars, drained him of it, cut him off from its flow, left him to flail on the ground, trying to find a way to survive, hoping just to be done with the entire mess and bury him later. That's not what God wants for you. That's not what God wants for us. We need to let God restore everyone, no matter who they are. And I know there's folks that get under your skin just like mine. And I know there's people that you've had struggles with and problems with. And there are people that, that even to this day, I, I, I'm not comfortable with them being around me or around my family or anything. And I understand that you have to have those safeguards. But never forget that, that Christ didn't just die for good people. He died for those that weren't so good. He did. No matter their failures, no matter their skin color, no matter their faults or their sin. That's right, Sam. God doesn't expect us to be perfect. That's why we have the blood. Without the blood, everybody dies. Doesn't matter your color or your skin, black, white. Doesn't matter how rich or poor you are. Uh, your orientation, whatever, drug addicts, alcoholics, you could be the first lady or a harlot. We all need the blood of Jesus Christ. We all need to be washed. We all need to be forgiven. Without the blood to save and the spirit to empower uh, you know, us, then, then we have no hope. See, by the blood of the, of the Lamb of God, any man, woman, boy, or girl, regardless of our failures, regardless of our past sin, all, it says, can come boldly and equally and unashamedly to the foot of the cross. For the precious blood Jesus can save and invigorate and wash us. That's what he'll do for you. He's got you covered. He died to cover your sins. He died for that very reason. You say, so So you're saying that, that I can be forgiven even though I did this 10 years ago and I got in trouble for it and I lost a family over it or money over it or a marriage over it or this over it. I'm telling you right now, it does not matter what you have done in your past. The blood of Christ washes that away if you just let it. We will never experience great and full revival in ourselves until we allow God's fountain filled with blood that's drawn from Emmanuel's veins to cascade over us and make us clean. See, how can we ever think we can access that soul cleansing blood that delivers us from the cesspool of our own secret sins and all the while looking down on another member of Christ's body in disdain and judgment? You have to understand God loves us all. He died for every one of us. The worst, the best, those that are good, the bad, and the ugly. He did that for us. And that blood of Christ is still the only anecdote to the plague of sin. And I'll tell you right now, sin isn't just found in the world. There's lots of sin found in the church, too. So the blood has to be readily available for those who are in the world and also those who falter and fail within the church. Maybe you've made some mistakes in your walk with God. Maybe you failed miserably in your walk with God. Well, then I'll tell you right now, we all suffer from the fatal inf you know, infection called sin. There's not one person on here today that's perfect. Not one of us. There's only one perfect being and they crucified him. If you ever find a perfect church, don't join it. You'll mess it up. But understand, God died for you. He loves you. And if you were the only person on planet Earth, he still would have died for you. That's how much he loves you. And yes, we all have different symptoms. We all
struggles. We all have done different things. But thank God, regardless of what it is, it's still the same disease called sin. And there's one cure, and it's called the blood of Christ. See, we're quick to offer the blood to sinners just coming in from out there from the world. <laughs> but what about the Adams and the Eves that are right in the midst of us? That have already had access into the garden. That have already fellowship with God. That have already seen him every day. What about those people that fail in their faith sometimes? Do we just walk away from them? Do we just give up on them? No. Because it don't matter where you're at in your walk with God. We all still need him. We all still need this blood to cover us. See, we offer very little balm of Gilead for the injuries that come from inner flaws and failures. And because we're not so quick to offer uh, God's covering blood to uh, and make provision for those who fail within the church, you know, we have a lot of folks doing what Adam and Eve did, so they hide. You know who I'm talking about. It's hard to face life in the world, let alone when you fail and you go to a church or you have a Christian family that, is there with you. It's tough. Because the bottom line is, and I'm going to be very honest here, the reason why we go and hide is because we're afraid if we confess our sin, if we share it with somebody for looking for help or, or looking for encouragement, all of a sudden we'll hear about it from 10 other people in 24 hours because of the gossip weed that travels so well. That's why people hide their sins now. That's why people aren't quick to uh, you know, say I'm struggling with this because they're so afraid. Who do we trust? Who can we tell this to that it won't come back and be used against us? That's the real issue. So they hide, just like Adam and Eve hid in the garden. And God's coming to visit with them every day, but they're hiding. And that's how we look at it sometimes. We think, oh, the blood is for new converts. It's it's the people we just baptized last week. It's not for me. I've been in the church a long time. I've had my faith for 40 years, but you still need the blood. But what we do is we, we cower down. We hide. We try to ignore the symptoms. We try to make believe. We try to pretend all the time inside of us. So many people are struggling with so many hurts and so many failures and and, and they try to get through it and they go to church and they make a decision on Sunday that I'm all done with that lifestyle. I'm not going back to it. I'm not going to live it anymore. And then by Wednesday, they're tired and disgruntled and they're upset and they're angry and they had a fight with somebody and work isn't working out. So they go back to the same mess that they just came out of. And the enemy gets upon you and gets in your brain and he conde condemns you and tells you you're worthless and useless, that you'll never be free of all that torment. And I'm telling you, there is a freedom you can experience through the blood of Jesus Christ. And they hear the message, but can't stop, you know, can't step out and, you know, in front of a crowd because all the crowd wants to do is point out their nakedness and their failures but it offers nothing to cover them. You see, the blood has to be readily available for everybody, for the church folk, just as much as the world. We can't be selective about it all at all. We can't see Adam was still God's son in Luke three and 38. It says Adam, which was the son of God. Did Adam fall? Yes. Was he in sin? Yes. Was he foolish? Yes. Did he mess up? Yes, he did. He was kicked out of the garden. But God still said, this is my son. See, our failures don't forfeit God's love for us. He still calls you his son, his daughter, his child. Because his blood reaches to the falling and the faltering and the failing folks that are in the world as much as in the church who hide in the, in the bushes you know, grasping for something to cover them. So they grab some fig leaves. <laughs> but never forget, God sees you. He sees us. He does. He sees us. So who is willing among us to go and find those that are hiding because of failure? Who's willing to reach out and say, you know what? I know you're struggling with this. Here's our 
not going to come back at you. We're not going to blab it and gab it, we're, or, you know, whatever. We're just going to let you know we love you and there's blood that's there for you. God still cares about you. But so many people, sometimes all they want to know is the next bit of information, the next tidbit. Why don't we forget that foolishness and just say, hey, God loves you enough that he died for you and we're going to find a way through it. How can we expect the Adams and the Eves among us to stand again unashamed if we offer no sanctity or no uh, uh, help or no, you know, hope for them in exchange for their failures? But if it's our own family, boy, I tell you right now, we want mercy for our kids, but we're quick to condemn everyone else's. Uh, I know I'm saying some plain stuff here today. But I want us all to understand God's got us all covered, not just one, not just a few, not just the select, not just the ones that look good, smell good, not just the ones that have enough money, not the ones that drive the right car, not just the ones that live in the big house. God has covered all of us with his blood. He shed his blood for each and every one of us. And I'll tell you right now, whatever God discovers in us, his blood is powerful enough to cover it truth is there's no secrets because he sees the thoughts the intents of our heart but before god covered adam he you see what he what god did he showed up in that garden of eden and he slew that goat and took the uh the, the hide and made clothing for adam and eve but watch this god didn't put the goat hair the the new clothes the new robe over the old fig leaves because god's not in the business of cover-ups he wants to wash it away. Never forget, his blood doesn't just cover you. It washes that away. Old things become new. All that stuff is in the sea of God's forgetfulness, never to be brought up against you again. We are so uncomfortable with our own humanity. We are afraid to take off the disguise sometimes. We're afraid to risk the removal of our religious masks and just come naked before God with all of our faults and failures that we've managed to cover so well. But friends, he sees all that stuff. An innocent lamb was slain. Adam was wrapped in the coat of that lamb. Adam continued to live on, wrapped in the covering of the innocent lamb. And yes, there was ramifications of the fall. We know that part of the curse of childbirth, pain and childbirth and, you know, disease, afflictions and, thorns and thistles and all that but his but but god still made a way and he will for you adam quit blaming eve eve quit blaming adam they both both realized had it not been for god his blood the covering that he has given to us so that regardless of the differences and our flaws, regardless of who we try to blame or project the anger upon, I'll tell you right now, without the blood of Jesus Christ, the liar is as lost as the child molester. Oh, the symptoms are different, but the disease is the same. The prognosis is the same. The anecdote prescribed is the same. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen to that, rough cut. Be what we should be. No one has it all together, so stop disqualifying yourself from grace because you don't have it all together. Let me know if you ever get it all together. I I've been in this a long time, and I've never had it all together. But this is who I am. You are who you are. In a discussion that Paul had with the New Testament church, they were asking him, he was teaching them about the blood. He was teaching them about God's forgiveness. He was teaching them about living a way that is righteous before God. And they said to Paul, they asked him a question. They said, Paul, if we do this, this, and this, if we allow the blood to cover us and wash us clean and all that, and, and we embrace God's spirit and we live this way, there's a dog in the background saying amen. If we do those things, then, then they said to Paul, they said, so 
He put it on in sin. And Paul said this to the church. He said, God forbid. God forbid that you continue on in sin. That's like telling somebody, you know, that house is on fire and you educate them about the how they would die if they walk in it and all that stuff and they still walk in it anyway. God forbid. You see, God's blood covers us. It cleanses us. He is ready to forgive us. His spirit is real and rich and true. It's there. It's there for all of us. We just ask for it. But we have a responsibility. I can't just go blatantly live my life any old way I want to. I can't. Because I want to live a life that's pleasing to God first. That follows the word of God. I don't want to make excuses. I, I can't change the word of God to apply to my life. I've got to change my life to apply to the word of God. And we can sit back all day long and, and split hairs on certain little things of scripture. And that's all good and great and have theological discussions. But the bottom line is we need to live how God wants us to live. That's right, Dave and Sandy. We each have a role to play in God's kingdom here on earth. We should be doing our best to do it, whatever it may be. So we have a responsibility to live for God. You say, well, I can do whatever I want now. I've been baptized and all that. I can do whatever I want. And, it, and the blood just keeps washing it off. It's not the way it works. It's like a, it's like a speeding ticket. The Autobahn Highway, many of you know it, it's, it's, it's in Germany uh, through Europe. And you know, for many, many, many years, there was no speed limits on the Autobahn. So you go woo, 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 as fast as you want to drive, no speed limits. But then they decided a few years back that the speed was getting so fast, cars were getting so, so much faster, that if they didn't do something, people were going to die all the time. And so they started putting up speed limit zones on the Autobahn. Now, before those signs were up, you could go as fast as you want to because they didn't know the law. There was none. Nothing. There was no sign there. So you, you couldn't get charged. You couldn't get convicted where there was no sign. But now all of a sudden there's a road sign that says, you know, 100 or 110 miles per hour kilometers over there. It's in Europe. 120 kilometers an hour maximum. So now all of a sudden... If you go beyond that, you can get the speeding ticket. Why? What's the difference? Because before you didn't know there is the law that apply. Now they it's there and you have to know it. So once you become educated to it, you can't deny that it's there. And it's the same thing when you walk with God. Once the Lord shows you stuff, once he shows you doing certain things is wrong, you can't just say, oh, I know it's wrong, but hey, I'm forgiven anyway. That's the truth. But you have an obligation now that if God has revealed that to you, then you need to stop doing that behavior that is contrary to what he wants in your life. But never forget, friends, he's got you covered. Always, every day, all the time no matter what you're going through. So if you've got things in your life today that you've struggled with for a long time, if you've got things that keep coming up in your brain, every time you, you know, you, you know, every, every time you try to build a new friendship, all that past hurt comes or a new relationship and all that past stuff comes. If you're still anchored to all that hurt in your past, if you can't forgive yourself, and so many people don't, you've got to. That's right, Dave and Sandy. Change our desires to match God's desires for us. Our life will be much greater and be much more blessed. We can live. 
But again, there's so many people that struggle with these things. I can't forgive myself for doing that. What was I thinking? You know, people go home. I'm just going to be playing. People go home every Sunday. Look, I pastored for, you know, 28 years. People go home every Sunday and turn on their computers and go to immoral sites, things that they promised God an hour ago. I'm not going to watch anymore. And they go home and they fall right back into the same trap again. And then you, it's a cycle. And then you feel guilty. And then it affects your life. It affects your walk with God. It affects your prayer life. It affects your church attendance. It affects your marriage. It affects your relationship with people around you. All because of that cycle of, I'm trying, I failed, I'll never get out of it. And the devil reminding you that you're the failure that you are. But how about you do this? Why not take a chance this week? And when all that temptation and when all that turmoil and when all that past hurt and all those guilty feelings come, why don't you start saying, God is my Lord. He's my shepherd. I'm washed in his blood. I know him by name. He's my habitation, my strong tower. I can run into him. He's my refuge. He will lift me up. He's the keeper of my heart. He loves me unconditionally. When you start saying those things and you say them continually, before long, you start walking in that victory, projected by the words that you're saying, because God's got you covered. When I got up this morning, I've been looking over some things and writing some things down all week and stuff, but I I, I really felt so strongly that somebody needed to hear today. God still loves you. You have not failed so bad that he gave up on you. Others may have, but I can promise you this. God has not given up on you and we have not given up on you. You've given up on you. And you need to give yourself a break. You need to tell yourself you're forgiven. And you need to let that stuff go. And no, God has got you covered. If this has helped you today, would you put that in the comment? Would you just say something to let me know? Let's be transparent here for a second and just, just be honest and say, I needed this. This has helped me. I'm going to be better. I'm going to be stronger. Because that's what the word of God should do. For sure. God's word is so amazing that I can sit right here in this house full of packed up goods <laughs> and God speak to us through this uh, social, social media platform, Creekside Chronicles, no matter where you're at. And he can help folks and let them understand God's got you covered. He truly has. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I'm not saying you're going to wake up and everything's going to be (laughs) hunky-dory. I'm not going to say that you'll never struggle with feelings of failure and fear. And you're going to have the scars of the past. That's true. What we had to come through shapes us into where we're at and what we are today. I'm simply saying your life can be better if you just let God wash a lot of that stuff out of your life. Just let it go. Because he does have you covered. He really does. You just need to ask him for help. And he will definitely help you. He really, truly will. So God bless you today. I hope that you've enjoyed this. I have enjoyed bringing this to you. That's it. It Reminds me to reach for him at times of temptation. Always. Because we're never tempted beyond what we can handle. Every temptation has a door out. It's called choice. Choice. What we choose every single day. What we choose. How we react. How we respond. That's our choice. But always remember God's got you covered. From when we fail, and we will, and we have, 
we mess up and we will and we have you know always remember but for the grace of god there go i he's been good to us he's been good to us thank you everyone if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do so we appreciate that so much if you like to support the channel you can right through the paypal link right on the page um, it helps us out so much uh, especially at this time of life where we're traveling and trying to get moved and we didn't do a pop-up live yesterday forgive us for that um <laughs> thank you mike appreciate that buddy um honestly we just weren't feeling very good um at all throughout the week and um uh, so it is what it is we have days and weeks like that um but today i would ask for your prayers um we've got six days of rain going to hit us starting tomorrow so what i'm going to do we're going to load the truck and the trailer with as many boxes of stuff that we can get on the truck and trailer this afternoon um hey no problem at all christy it's my privilege thank you um it did it did get better i noticed that um so we're going to load the truck and the trailer up this afternoon and joni's going to stay here and continue working on stuff on this end while i go and drive six hours to uh her mom's house just up by the new property thanks marshall um god bless you buddy um and so and marshall if my wife hasn't said anything to you uh, she needs to get your address so if you could send me an email at creekside maples at gmail.com that's creekside maples at gmail.com with your full address we would appreciate it so much um and so i'm leaving here this afternoon in a, two or three hours and i'm driving all the way to fredericton and then we're going to unload all this stuff and then i'm coming all the way back here but then we're all doing it at the same time um you know in a 24-hour period because i can't be gone away from here very long because there's so many things that we need to get done so pray for me that i stay awake that um, everything will work out okay while i drive it's going to be 12 hours total driving uh yes marshall it was <laughs> but my wife lost she lost because we're packing everything she thinks she packed all that stuff up um we sent you something in the mail um and it came back to us because there was no p.o box so uh but uh anyhow we'll get it straightened around there but yeah thank you scott but that's that's what i'm going to be doing um for the next i'll be back here tomorrow sometime uh it's going to be a very long uh, haul because i got to load everything here and then go there and we're going to load unload everything there and take it down into the basement of Joni's mom's house so that's a lot of work and a lot of boxes uh, hopefully we can line up some help on the other end uh, we'll see what will happen um, but anyway that's what we're doing and then and once we get all the boxes out then it's tool time with Tony uh, to pack up all the tools and uh, cover them all over with tarps and then get get that stuff oh it's just it's it's uh, it's crazy is what it is but thank you everyone for being here god bless you and we will keep you updated and uh probably do a little pop-up live while i'm traveling along the road to keep me awake if i do uh that is a lot of driving christy but we really don't have any choice here we've got to get out of this house every day um every day puts us behind on the build so we have to uh, we have to get going so take care everyone thanks jesse for um, helping out with um, the links and all that stuff. We appreciate it so much. And so we shall talk to you all very soon. God bless you. We'll see you Tuesday night on the live show. And uh, we'll have fun. Um, it's going to be a good time. Take care, everybody. Thanks, Rebecca. God bless you. Have a great day, everybody. And I hope this has helped you. Have a great week. And remember, God's got you covered through everything. You're never alone. God bless you.